all right then uh transfer sitting back over uh hello everyone how's everyone doing welcome in lads lasses and nb badasses um more uh reading stream aim ah it is pick uh, some more like um the short essays that's a word or, or to be able to read uh, i kind of like he got a, like a, the spur of information to like uh, pick out uh, some of these uh, essays uh, because i think it was like mentioned um uh, so last wednesday uh, for a trick and luckily stream on my friend's uh she's uh youtube channel uh if we uh, there was a couple of other anarchists that were in the live chat as well. Strange how like Steve Tyson for being a liberal has like uh, brought the, uh, together with him uh, a bunch of anarchists. Oh damn it! I forgot to. Ch uh, I'm a professional streamer. I need to update the uh, title thing. I have a visible, but it was like it's from like yesterday's, which actually was a good essay. Uh, that I thought. Uh, but the title is in key and violence and ergo now tesla it's a good thing i know that now um mm -hmm. and oh so probably should like also uh make visual the uh, uh, content warnings blah uh but uh well, i'm transitioning over and um i try to leave the content warning in the same actually which is like say death and uh, and state violence uh so political talk about about state violence violence and state violence i should say so because i meant because when we were talking with about an anarchist like Elmer mount tesla and i mentioned that like we we're going to be talking about like uh, violence and state violence and i think i'm in fine with like uh, how it looks there as well it's kind of like a get the cop the top of like my hat but if i lean back enough then it will be able to see me as well um so, so yeah so back on last wednesday on a uh, steve shots that tricked reluctantly there was a conversation in there oh yeah because steve shies well, they would get on there. It's kind of weird. It, it uh, because Steve Shots mentions how like uh, the South, the Confederacy in the South, and like the um, 1860s uh, in America, um, with that Civil War or something like that. This the slave uh, nation, as it were, um, the short-lived slave nation, and that one that fought a civil war, tried to have a, their own revolutionary war, the rebellious war, so that they can like keep slaves and be have the right to be able to keep and own slaves as it were if for their economic uh prosperity as it were and also because they're just like incredibly racist and don't see uh black people as uh humans at the time uh they see them as property instead um and so uh she see shives as a uh, liberal uh, uh, hello lynn how are you doing uh and, and express um Basically, I express that like General Sherman, uh, the burning of Atlanta, so were kind of had the right idea, just like slash and burn everything, which is kind of strange because C. Tries a liberal, he rejects uh, my idea of just like metaphorically speaking, we're on Twitch, but metaphorically speaking, and actually, it's not really, I don't think, a good tactic either, but metaphorically speaking, just like slash and burn this entire system, this man, well, this mental state and this mental capitalism for sure, and dismantle what his cis hetero owl patriarchy and white supremacy and uh, ableism and settler colonialism and imperialism, dismantle all those things and start new no steve shots not doesn't like that he thinks no our current system can tweak as much but once it comes to the like, confederacy and like slavery he has no problem with like, slashing and burning theirs as he kind of like maybe half and just but like in thinking a lot of sincerity he says no i'm fine with what Gem general sherman did in like uh the confederate civil war against the confederacy because they were doing it against slave owners uh, so it was kind of because other comrades were actually in the chat uh someone mentioned uh eric romalitas Tesla's views on violence and in the and my comrades are saying, yeah, Elkham Tessa would not actually approve of Steve Shaw's position of just slashing and burning the Confederacy as it were. So that got me thinking, it's like, you know, yeah, 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 because like anarchist view on violence is actually a bit nuanced and something like that. So I figured, uh, read uh, some Elkham uh, Tessa's words. And I found on Anarchist Library, oh, I haven't updated the reading uh, command. Damn it. I'm a. I'm, I'm, just recently new no no that that's a timer i need the command and so because it is the reading is in the title uh, at least there's only like a couple of people like my friends and so uh 
uh, copy pasta. So, then, then, energy and violence. But how are you doing, Len? How are you doing this Sunday? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Neural crimes were the indigenous people who were he waged war on, and why I should care about a bunch of plantation owners and benefactors of the Confederacy. Uh, that now the, the 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 crimes against indigenous people. Yes, that's totally um uh, fair as it were. Er, my Tesla. <clears throat> And yeah, everything all updated as were or confirmed. But then I also have a nice little retreat coming in as well for anyone else that like pops in, because I'm gonna pull up my tweet as it were. Or uh, actually, Len, I know that you're not on Twitter and you're not gonna retweet it. That's totally fine. But like, go ahead and actually, um. You can still, I think, you find enjoyment at at least looking at uh, the tweet I made to promote uh, this stream. I use a meme in there to kind of like help to like advertise it, as it were. Uh, it's a meme I like, so you can at least enjoy the meme, as it were, even if you're not going to retweet it. Uh, and again, this is a, this is a, um, a fundraising stream for my friend Phoenix. Uh, I have to like, um, help them uh, cover some of their um, uh, expenses for that they need by tomorrow. Uh, but uh, for, by this Friday, they're not going to get their SNAP payments until this Friday, the 16th. And so they need some, uh, it would be nice to have a a little bit of money that will cover uh, this week for like uh, food expenses as were. Well. Probably will cover that as well. But anyone is welcome to like uh, donate there if you have the means to do so. Um, either directly do them with the PayPal or the GoFundMe in order to do so, or you can like donate to me and it'll go to and it'll affect the alerts in the donation bar. Uh, I think that's all of the things as so were. Are, are granted, yes, I agree that like a fuck the Confederacies as the slave owner plantation owners as were. Or there, but on the topic of like violence and anarchy, now it's time to read uh Eric Mao Tesla's uh, Anarchy and Violence. And here's the reading for the first essay. And so uh, we'll start. And I I got my cup of tea here. It's Earl Grey. Tea? Earl Grey? Hot. Mm. Alright. And now the thing is, like I, I will say this. Uh, why, why I decided to really do this because I found two essays by the same title, "Anarchy and Violence" by Eric Matt Tessa. This one is uh, 1894, and, and the source is from the uh, Eric Matt Tessa's "Readers and Methods of Freedom," Part One and Part Two, Liberty London One, blah blah blah. There we go. So, let's begin. Eric Matt Tessa, "Anarchy and Violence." Um. For the first, or from their first manifestations, anarchists have been nearly unanimous as the necessity of their recourse to physical force in order to transform existing society. And while the others self-styled revolutionary parties have gone foundering into parliamentary slog, the anarchist idea has in some sort identified itself with that of armed insurrection and violent revolution. Um... Uh, I, I can. Uh, I really can't really blame myself for that as well, because I have like uh, perpetuated that in my rhetoric as well, and definitely have in the past as well. Uh, but I'll continue. Um, but perhaps there has been no sufficient explanation as to the the kind and the degree of violence to be employed. And here is, as in many other questions, a very similar, uh, dissimilar ideas of uh, and sentiments lurk under our common name. As a fact, the numerous outrages, which has largely been per per perpetuated by anarchists uh, and the name of anarchy, have brought into light of day uh, profound differences which uh, had formerly been ignored or scarcely foreseen. Um, yeah, and there's 
I mean, there's a lot of uh, other self-identified anarchists that, like, uh, perform uh, acts of violence as war. And I wonder if, like, uh, Elko Mount Tesla is going into the uh, propaganda of the deed, which is something that, like, even uh, the anarchist thinker Mikhail Bakunin actually kind of, like, uh, purported. Because, to be fair, though, in, like, the 1800s, the late 1800s, a lot of people, like, uh, were illiterate. So they couldn't really, like, read theory as were. And there are some theory that's very dense and very complicated to, like, read. So... As, uh, I forgot who, like, said it, but Tabby knows the name of this person that said it. As, I can't read Marx, why would I read Marx when I have the marks of capitals in all over my body? Mm. You know, and and also, um, as some people have said, I it's so it's di so difficult for me to read the theory of like Marx because I'm living under the oppression that Marx talks about, as it were. Is but uh, Mikhail Pakunin uh, at the time in like the 1870s kind of like advocated for the propaganda of the deed, doing an act to like galvanize the working class, the proletariat, to like rise up and revolt and not uh, uh, to uh, dismantle uh, the system as it is uh, through the kind of like um, a Biden's introduction or revolution. Um, but it, it, it in practice it never seemed to like work out and there's uh even like the anarchists uh, as uh, the self-identified anarchists that killed uh the american uh president mckinley they kind of like did didn't help the cause of like uh, anarchism and anarchy because then people think anarchists oh like that one assassinated the president and also uh even in like recent history uh because uh he was a self-identified anarchist uh the, the, the ted kaczynski the humor bomber uh but which also didn't help like the names uh, the uh, reputation of anarchists because uh well one thing is just like there are anarchists I don't agree with that are self-identified anarchists, like Ted Kaczynski, primalists, and no, I don't agree with primalists, no! And I'm sure it was, like, difficult for uh, anarchists at the time to be like, no, uh, we are not all like Ted Kaczynski, not all of us are anti-civilization. And I personally am not anti-civilization either, no. It's just like, not only because I'm a gamer and I love the technology of the dual monitors, the desktop computer, Yeti microphone, be able to broadcast to like many different people, watch them play my video games and stuff like that. It's not just like that selfish reason, and I agree it's a selfish reason, um, and, or like smartphones as well, but also is because like the technology that we have gotten now from civilization is help accommodate uh, for people, uh, for disabled people who just like it's difficult to get around or they is uh, they find it really hard for physical things or other things to like um they have a full flourishing life and so the technology from civilization will can help those people accommodate i'm for the full literally automated gay space communism sort of like a potential future i want to strive for that not like um anti-civilization future i mean if hey, i had to really be hard pressed and i had to think about it it's more it's like of the options of like capitalism dystopia or like hunter gather society or um a fully anarchist society or a realistic anarchist society but like with not this uh, great uh, technological wise it'll be like a tough choice for me um but anyway, I'll continue on with the essay. Enough, the, enough uh, deviation. Enough of the tangent for now. Anyway, um, some comrades discuss at the audacity uh, and uselessness of certain uh, uh, of certain of these acts have declared themselves opposed to all violence whenever. Uh, I certainly know people like that, but I'll continue on. Except in cases of personal defense against direct and in immediate attack uh side note here i still think that like a, a no matter wh whoever's like stances on violence and something like that i think we can all agree that of, of like um personal defense and against the direct and the immediate attack which is a like, totally a uh, legitimate form of violence that we can like a, um engage in or like um be ready for at least or at least uh tolerate mm. anyway continuing on uh, which, in my opinion, would mean the renew remuneration of all revolutionary initiatives and the reserving of our blows for the petty. 
uh, and often involuntary agents of the government. Uh, while leaving in peace the organizers, organizers of those chiefly benefited by government and capitalist exploitation. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like, oh, listen, the, the people who like are happen to be like government agents, that's a war, but we're, like, really just need the job in order to like uh, give mix and meets and shows to be the job of the government. Those people are not going to be like subjects or are the target of our ours, more or less, as work. The, the people at the DMVs, they're just working a job like anyone else. They're, they're not like the face of the government. They just work for the government. That's where. However, the politicians, the, the ruling class, the higher epsilon things like senators, presidents, Kings, uh, prime ministers, or something like that, or higher officials, or lead, or heads of departments of the government. So those are some of those people that will have our ours. The, that's where the buck should stop with them, and especially since they benefit from the government and the capitalist exploitation. As uh, Eric Matt also just said, and I'll continue on. Other comrades, on the contrary, carry out by the excitement of the struggle, embitterment by the inflam. <sighs> Inflaming inflammation, uh, it, oh, my brain is like in famines. Okay, hey, I'll repeat this part again. Embittered by the inflammations of the ruling class and assuredly influenced by what has remained of the old Jacobin ideas permeating the political education of the present generation, has hastily accepted any and every kind of violence, provided only that it be committed in the name of anarchy. And they have claimed it hardly less than in the right of life and death over those who are not anarchists, or who are not anarchists exactly according to their pattern. Um, I think, it, it, yeah, I think uh, Eric Matt Tesla is kind of like a notice even in his time, which is actually true today. And I can be guilty of this too, for sure. Uh, at least in my rhetoric. rhetoric of like, we, we shouldn't be... We're not anarchists because we want revenge. We're not anarchists because we want to like destroy the things we hate. I mean, I hate capitalism and passion, but it's mostly because it's like forcing my friends, you know, a lot of my friends, to struggle in very different ways, and some, some to struggle so much that they only eat one meal a day. Which is why I fundraise or give money directly to those friends, and um, but it. It's, it's not really uh, effective in, as a recruiting tool or as a as a means of keeping the movement alive. And I do have the um, motivation behind our activism and our anarchism to be of hate. It is bet much better for it to be of love. Is love will bring us out of it. And plus, also, when you're recruiting uh, based on, like, let's fuck shit up, essentially, you kind of get, like, bad bad comrades uh in that mix uh recruit like um not the best people uh, to the movement or for or people that will be recruited to the movement not for the best reasons um and so i'll continue on and then yeah and so yes you can see that like even in this like passage that erica Tesla laments the purity test of like even the anarchists of his time were like doing that against like other anarchists as well for me it's just like anarchists who are for reform like uh, people will say when i say anarchism and constant work in progress which they would i think they would agree with but then say just like reform i'm like uh I still, I still am kind of like bothered that there are anarchist reformers, as it were. Um, socialists and communist reformers, there's already Dem socks, uh, Democrat socialists, so I'm not surprised. But anarchists that are more for reform as opposed to revolution, as it were. Again, we can have that debate of what do we mean by revolution. Do we mean a violent insurgency uh, act, or do we mean just like full transformation of society? Um yeah, which I, which I also think, and like, uh, it includes reimagining of the society. I was about to say reeducation, but I know how like uh, people would hear that and probably think of uh, educational camps, and it's, it's not what we should be for. Or we, I, I do think that like a society, a lot of people in society. Hey, Lee, you Justine, thank you for coming in. I think I'll, I do think that like there's got to be a lot uh, to be happen for. Or 
people to be re be educated properly on like socialist communism and anarchism and break the propaganda that have been fed and the indoctrination that they grew up in. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Sophie. Change from, comes from the ground up. Uh, which is why I'm not a, a fan of like siege and state power on like Lendis would do in like Malice. But anyway, uh, I think I've been told that Mal has had an anarchist uh, phase uh, in his uh, part of his life. And is but he dropped that anarchist phase when he realized that oh wait he can absorb power and make changes from from absolute power or something like that, and then got sucked in by that. But that'll be a topic for another time. Uh, continuing on, um, and the mass the public, uh, mass of the public ignoring those polemics and design and and deceived by the capitalist press, sees in anarchy nothing but bombs and daggers, and habitually regard anarchists as wild beasts thirsty for blood and ruin. And this is words written in 1894. Boy, has the more things changed, the more they stay the same, anarchists are still smeared like that. Sometimes, uh, fortunately, with actual reward events, like I mentioned of the Unibomber, who's a narco primitive self-identified, that kind of didn't help the name of anarchist. When people, when they hear anarchist, people think, oh, what, tanks can say, no, 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 no. <sighs> I mean, hopefully, maybe, and other actual anarchists like, um, James Scott, David Graeber, may he rest in power, Norm Tronsky, uh, kind of like not as mainstreamly publicly known, and and so so they can't really so we can't like point to them as like the 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 poster boys of like anarchism as it were. But then again, also the like uh, Eric Matthews says, the capitalist press they deliberately paint uh, anarchists as wild beasts thirsty for blood and ruin. Continuing on with the essay, it is therefore needful that we explain ourselves very clearly as regards to this question of violence, and that each one of us take a position act accordingly. Needful both in the interest of the relations of practical cooperation which may exist among all those who profess anarchism, as well as in the interest of general propaganda and for and of our relations with the public in my opinion there can be no doubt that the anarchist idea denying government is by its very nature opposed to violence which is the essence of every authoritarian system the mode of action of every government and Yusufine says uh, Sally just anyone can call themselves whatever they want so many people instantly just accept that and go oh my god look how bad blog group is agreed um, also uh, now I will say if I just met a person and they say I'm a socialist, cool. I, I, even even if what they mean by I'm a socialist is really what they don't realize that they mean uh, social democrat, you know, like Bernie Sanders or AOC, or a democratic socialist. Maybe they actually know that they are a democratic socialist in that they want socialism, but they want to go through it, achieve socialism through electoralism, which is like I have my disagreements of tactics there. I'm tired of electoralism now. Um, but uh, but I'm not going to like uh, shame people for just like participating in electoralism because that can do at least some good as well. It's probably better if like ideas, uh, socialist ideas and communist ideas are actually accepted by people within the system that can improve things. But I don't think it's going to like bring us to fully mutually automated gay space communism either. Um, so if I'm someone says I'm a socialist, cool comrade, even though they might be a sock them. Or I'm a communist, cool comrade. You probably you're at least very anti-capitalist, and I can like uh, talk to you, you know, people like that. When they say I'm a Leninist, mm, I have my issues with uh, Leninism. And if if the Leninist is like saying like, oh come on, Lenin did nothing wrong, really? Like we just mentioned today, so it's just alchemy. He appointed like Joseph Stalin, like in this day in history, like earlier this week and something like that, uh, back in like 1992. It's bad enough that he appointed Stalin, one thing, but there's also like the starvations that like um, in London just allowed to happen. Um, maybe with circumstances, I don't know. I have to look into that, but it's just kind of like, no, Lenin did some wrong things. So if you, if uh, Leninists can't admit that Lenin did wrong things, no. Um, and Stalinists are right out. Stalinist dingus right out. Nope, not going to bother with them, not going to talk to them. Nope. Uh, it's, um, uh, the Chicos were still cops. Yeah, that's a good point, Lynn. And I still have my position on cops. Mm. 
Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But they like say some stuff that like just uh, and Yusufine saying, "Oh yeah, I'm not saying that I like, don't accept uh, people when they tell you uh, what they believe, but when they say stuff that this that's agrees with what they claim, then maybe I like, stop talking, uh, taking their words for us. Exactly, because I and also there are some self-identified like so libertarian socialists that are for I've been told militarized borders. You know, you can't be a, like a libertarian socialist and be for militarized borders. No. no but yet, I, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, uh, so, yes, and I, I finished this part, so I'm going to get back to the essay. Um, anarchy is freedom in solidarity. It is only through the harmonization of interests, through voluntary cooperation, through love, respect, and and reciprocal tolerance by persuasion by example and by the excuse me and by the contagion of benevolence that it can be they ought to triumph uh, like i said earlier in the stream if we should our motivation should be out of love not out of hate not out of vengeance as so well love will bring us um and to the to the better future to the utopia uh, continue on. We are anarchists uh, because we believe that we never, eh, we can never achieve the combined well-being of all, which is the aim of all and our, of all our efforts, except through a free understanding among men and without forcibly imposing the will onto like others. Uh, again, which is why is i i always want to be careful when i say in, in re-education as we're that's not meaning we're forcing liberals to go to re-education camps as some liberals feared that like that's what anarchist wants to do because of misunderstanding from a youtube video or other places like that and maybe the youtuber probably just like misspoke or like you had a poor choice of words or sort of phrase it better like that's in from that's a problem in communication there i say oh uh, so continuing on with the essay in other parties there are certain men who are as sincere and as devoted to the interests of the people as best of as the best of us may be but that which characterize us anarchists and distinguish us from all others is that we do not believe ourselves in possession of absolute truths we do not believe ourselves either infallibly or omniscient which is the implicit uh, pretension of all legislators and political candidates whatever and consequently we do not believe ourselves called for the direction and the tutelages of the people I love this bit because we, the anarchists, are saying we're not experts. No, we we don't have all the answers. Literally, we don't have all the answers. The liberals can come up with very specific like uh, questions and something like that. Okay, so but there are still problems with anarchy because like if uh, the American syndicate or the American uh, syndicate of like the Pacific Northwest needs some materials that are only in like over on the across the Pacific Ocean with the Chinese syndicate, you got to figure out how to like acquire those materials from Chinese cigarette or you don't syndicate or you don't get those materials and something like that. That's what a liberal posit as like a saying a problem with anarchy as a philosophical um pro uh, ideology to which i say well yes that's also a problem under liberal dem capitalism democracy if the united states of america wants material that is only in china and china says no granted what the united states have often done when they have the power to do so they can't really do that in china but they can do that to bolivia is just back coup and take over the country or try their best to do so and remain in power or keep the dictators that they like uh, they put in power and keep in power back in them with like CLI trained like soldiers or or you know other kind of like a uh, military arms and like funding always and so it's kind of like that example that one liberal like come up with oh what if like the necessary materials in one place and those people that syndicate of that place is not really the trade well, that's a problem now. It's just not like how we solve that problem is with force. Force over the others. Again, posing onto us. But yet, and as Eric Ramon Tesla points out, the legislators and political candidates all seem to believe that like they are infallible and omniscient. 
and they have that express pretension to do so and uh, and they believe that like a that they're in the direction and tutelage they claim to be in the direction and tutelage of the people when really they're not all right so i continue on with the essay we are par excellence the party of freedom the party of free development the party of social experimentation but against this freedom, which we claim for all, against the possibility of this experimental search after better forms of society, there are erected barriers of iron. Legions of soldiers and police are ready to massacre and imprison anyone who will not meekly submit to law which a handful of privileged persons have made in their own interests. Even as soldiers and police do not exist, yet so long as a, the economic con constitution of society remains what it is, freedom would still be impossible because, since all means of life are under control of a minority, the great mass of mankind is obeyed to labor for the others and therefore wallow in poverty and degradation and, and, and degradation. Degradation. I thought that was like a, that word was a little more difficult than it is to pronounce. And yeah, it's all it's all because like the reason why we anarchists are against rich people is not because of someone just being rich of their own it's them owning the means of production owning the factory and uh, people have to like work uh, at the factory because somehow uh, it's a world where it's like oh the food at the farm that's privately owned by like someone as well and they're charging for the food that's grown there oh then someone who owns the houses oh lots of houses a landlord a massive landlord they have so many homes and they're charging rent for that mean the landlord's not really a job it's that whole thing of like if it's that economic constitution of like there's no free lunch or like there's nothing a lot that's free because that's what how capitalists wants that they don't want a free lunch to be there because they won't be able to charge you that lunch which you do need to eat at some point hey so there's a, the excellent market there and uh, and uh there's um uh, uh, there's nothing to uh, say it's like there's no free lunch and it was like what's the other thing it's like they said it free. I just said it in the end of the song. Then, and uh, capitalists and the state are anti-commons. Yes, Lynn Lewis, exactly. It's capitalism and the state are anti-commons as well. And, and with the economic constitution, as it were, is that like there are always going to be a handful, a small handful, minority of owners, while the vast majority is are not owners. And under the economic system of capitalism, of having capital and using that to make more capital, if someone has no capital, the only thing that they can have to sell is their labor, and so forces the many to wallow in poverty and decorations, as Eric Tesla said. Continuing on. Uh, the first thing to do, therefore, is to get rid of the armed forces which defend existing institutions, and by means of the export, <clears throat> exportation of the present holders, to place the land and the other means of production at the disposal of everybody. And this cannot possibly be done, in our opinion, without the employment of fiscal force. Moreover, the natural development of economic antagonism, the waking consciousness of an important fraction of the proletariat, the constant increasing number of unemployed, the blind resistance of the ruling class, in short, contemporary evolution as whole, is conducting us inevitably towards the outbreak of great revolution, which will overthrow everything by its violence, and the four running signs of which already is visible. This revolution will happen and with us or without us, and the existence of a revolutionary party consistent to the end to be attained, I will serve to give a useful direction to the violence and to moderate its excesses by the influence of the, the uh, lofty ideal. Uh, the classic saying is that, like, hey, hey no country, any and all countries, and no countries are. Every single country, every single society is three days of missed meals away from revolution, as it were. Um, because if like people are going hungry, then they have and then they might die of starvation anyway. Have nothing to lose, so might as well just like a a do a revolution as a word to just get uh bread. Uh, the mar women's march uh in France during the French Revolution was called the bread march because a lot of people in France were starving. Um, the 1917 Russian Revolution was called it had the slogan of bread and peace because uh what's kind of started the Russian Revolution was uh riots at the bread lines. 
And so it's because of people just going hungry uh, that causes and this is a constant antagonism as were. Uh, and at the time of like um, 1894, or yeah, uh, that's when this essay was written, uh, the, the many people feel that like the revolution is going to come. It's just around the corner. And hence why Peter Kropotkin wrote The Congress of Bread, because he figured that the revolution needs bread. Um, continuing on. Thus it is we that we are revolutionists in the sense in this sense and within these limits violence is not the con in contradiction with anarchist principles since it's not the result of our free choice but is imposed upon us by necessity in defense of our unrecognized human rights which are thwart by brute force i repeat here as anarchists we cannot do if we cannot and we do not desire to employ violence except in the defense of ourselves and others against oppression but we claim this right of defense entirely real and efficient and efficiencies efficacious that is we wish to be able to be go behind the material instrument which wounds us and to attack the hand which holds the instrument and the head which directs us Oh, and we wish to choose our, our own hour and field of battle, uh, so as to attack the enemy under conditions as favorable as possible, whether it be when he's actually provoking and attacking us, or at times when he slumbers and relaxes his hands, counting on proper submission, for as a fact, the bourgeoisie is in a permanent state of war against the proletariat, since it's never for one moment ceased to exploit the latter and grind it down. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, literally, they grind us down. Hence why we're cogs in the machine, as a word. Uh, and the bourgeoisie need us to, the proletariat, to, for us to be afraid of being sick and tired, or so that we're not fighting against our oppression, as a word. Just want to get through one more day. Hey, another day over, another day over, and you're deeper in debt. Um,. And again, it's like the uh, proletariat has been like forced into the situation through violence, like through the enclosure movement. The uh, commons were uh, the uh, like uh, Lin Mu said, capitalist and state is anti-commons. They used to be the land that was owned in common, but then the enclosure act this, uh, stopped that. The enclosure movement stopped that. Now the land's no longer in commons. It's owned by landlords, so, and they decided that. And so then peasants uh, who like live off the lands that were owned in common could not farm those lands because that's someone else's property. You're trespassing, and we're forced to go into the um the in, in the factories in the cities during the, during the early parts of the Industrial Revolution, as it were, uh, and later into the Industrial Revolution. So, yes, um, the current manifestation of the nation states, um, as well as uh, the capitalism, was forced onto us with violence. So, it's so the very least of like our view on violence, at least our, and our Tesla view of violence, which I also uh, concur with, is that we have to at least fight against this violence and have to defend ourselves against this violence, especially since it's a constant war of the upper class against the lower class. I mean, pff, hell, in our current days, it was like the Republicans just slashing benefits for like SNAP, um, a disability, a, a Medicare, Medicaid, and something like that, and, and saying that like we have to like balance the budget when it, it meant it's such a minute, minute, small percentage of the total budget, as it were. When and the, even with the Democrats now, with the Biden administration of like increasing the Pentagon budget, as it were, uh, there is still like a constant war on the poor, as it were. Uh, so I'm going to continue on. Unfortunately, many among the acts which has been committed in the name of anarchy, there has been some which, though while wholly lacking in anarchist uh, um, uh, characteristics, have been wrongly confounded with other acts of obvious anarchist inspiration. For my part, I protest against the conf this confusion because acts wholly different in moral values as well as in practical effect effects. As it's referring to what I mentioned earlier about like the propaganda of the deed again, like um, the anarchist who assassinated the, the American president McKinley, which actually didn't happen at the time that like uh, Eric Matessa wrote this, I believe. Uh, but I'll continue on. Despite the 
it's uh, the extra communication and the insult to certain people, I consider it an essential part to discriminate between the heroic act of a man who consciously sacrifices his life for that which he believes will do good and the utmost involuntary act of some unhappy man whom society has reduced to despair, or the savage act of a man who has been driven astray by suffering and has caught the contagion of this civilized savagery which surrounds us all between the intelligent act of the man who before acting weighs the weighs the probable good or evil that may result from his cause and the thoughtless act of a man who strikes at random between the generous act of one who exposes himself to danger in order to spar to spar suffering to his fellows and the bourgeoisie act of one and who brings suffering upon others for his own advantage, between the anarchist act of one who desires to destroy the obstacles that stand in the way of this reconstitution of society on the basis of free agreement of all, and the authoritarian act of the man who intends to punish the crowd for its stupidity, to terrorize it, which makes it so more stupid, and to impose his own ideas upon them. Yeah, exactly, Lin Wu. Is capitalism civilized? Uh, I know. No, it's not. I, I, I don't think so. Because when you think about like our relations with other uh, people, just like brothers, friends, or something like that, again, have you ever borrowed a video game from someone or a DVD or something like that? My my older brother loves anime. He, in fact, lent anime to his friends. It's like, I want you to check out this anime or something like that. And sometimes he has forgotten, wait a minute, who did I send lend that anime to? And sometimes years later, oh, hey, Aaron, you, you lent this anime to me, and I watched it, and it's pretty good. So here, I'll return to you. Oh, that's where I lent it out to. We are old, com as David Graeber has pointed out, in debt the first 5,000 years. We're kind of old communists with each other, with our friends, with our neighbors. Hey, you want something like a cup of sugar or something like that? Oh, hey, I'm... Uh, Hey, does anyone is anyone willing to like uh jump start my car? I just need to be able to get some juice to like uh, and to get to work on the day. We are communists with each other, especially in like in a family union. But when it comes to like the workplace, apparently no one would like clean the toilets as were well, unless you paid them. Why would we want to be cogs and machines? The only reason that we are cogs and machines and working for someone else is because we're forced to. And yet many people have said, oh, that's why you should like work for yourself and be your own like a uh, person, as it were. It's, which is not feasibly possible for the vast majority of us because, as this essay points out, it's the constant war and violence from the bourgeoisie against the proletariat. Uh, okay, so I already read this part, so I'm going into the next section, continuing on. Most assuredly, the bourgeoisie has no right to complain of the violence of its foes, since its whole history as a class is a history of bloodshed, and since the system ex exploitation, which is the law of its life, daily produces a head commute. Uh, uh, head contumes of innocence. Uh, certainly, too, it is not political parties who complain of violence, for these are, one and all, red handed and blood split uh, unnecessarily and wholly in their own interests. These who have brought up the young, the young generation after generation in the cult of forced triumph, these who, when uh, they are not actually apologists of the Inquisition, Right, so that wasn't uh, at the time of the writing of this essay. It wasn't that long ago that the Spanish Inquisition, uh, continuing on, are yet enthusiastic admirers of that red terror, which uh, check the splendid revolutionary impulse at the end of the last century and prepared the way for the empire and for the for the restitution and the white terror. I mean, okay. So think about it, how we're growing up in society currently, like in like our school system, because it's impolite and we should not be hitting each other as it were. Uh, some people still get away with it. That's part of the bully pulpit, um, which David Graeber wrote an essay on. Um, but we're taught several times over and over again, violence is not the answer. Okay, then why do our governments go to war so often or do other like violent actions? It's kind of like... What they do with as you they do as we're told, but not as you do. 
uh, so if and also sometimes it's like in many people's like personal uh, experiences uh with like a uh, school bullies if uh, when, if violence are not the answers however going to the authorities like uh teachers and administrators of the school and they do nothing that kind of teaches the kids okay so what am i supposed to do you're saying violence is not the answer but yet when i do the proper things it doesn't seem to work because the you don't do anything about the bullet and the bullet keeps pulling me so when i finally fought back against the bullet the bullet backs down sometimes that's I mean, some people the results may vary unfortunately i mean so it's, so it's there by them, the ruling class of the bourgeoisie, uh, especially the political parties and political politicians and so on. No, we must not be violent, as it were. The, it kind of protects the institution of the state that imposes violence on us. Currently, in the current year, um, just this past year, but and for generations, uh, the state violence against like people of color from the police has been abhorrent. And yet, still, even in the last year or so, there have been politicians who say we understand why you know, people are very upset with the police in brutality since, but they should not be looting or burning buildings or burning trash cans. Oh, how, oh man, you threw a book through that Starbucks? See that man inside the Starbucks? He's scared now. He's fine. The brick wasn't for the guy in the Starbucks. It was for the Starbucks itself. It's a symbol. <sighs> Continuing on. Uh, the fit of mildness which has come over certain uh, the bourgeoisie now that their lies and their purses are menace is, in our opinion, extremely untrustworthy. But it is not for us to regulate our conduct by the amount of pleasures or vexations which it may occasion, which it may occasion the bourgeoisie. We have to conduct ourselves according to our principles and the interests of our cause, which our views is the cause of all humanity. Uh, and Linwell also says, like, Starbucks windows are more rebuildable than George Floyd. Excellent point. And targets as well. Targets are insured anyway for the looting. But what people don't understand about the looting that happened at, like, a Target, or which they kind of like it's in it's uh, the company's name, um, protesters try to actually go to a target and actually hey they can we need to buy these things and we need to buy these things as it were but when they were denied buying those things i mean giving money to the business to buy these things when the business uh, from what i've been told i need to research this to confirm it um but they, when they, the target the, the business of target denied those protesters their business yeah, they tried to buy water, as Lin Lu said. When they denied the business because it was for the protests, that's when uh, the looting happened. That's when they decided to like loot. There's also like the and in um a much earlier stream, like months ago, uh, I played the video by like Kimberly Jones on like the justification for the looting, as it were, or where it's like. Oh, uh, listen, and you uh, broke the contract for 350 years since the first black person has come here in 1619 or 1614. Um, as we have never been considered people, we're always property. It's only until, uh, the, and that was the case for the first 300, no, first 250 years or so until the Civil War. Then we're finally people, but we're still under Jim Crow or black codes. Black codes first and then Jim Crow. Oh, and then finally, we're now equal people in the law uh, after the civil rights and so on and so forth. It, and it's kind of like, and yet you're selling these smartphones and all these gadgets as from these advertisements on television and that the average black person, because of poverty, cannot afford to do so. Or even when they happen to have like a joint on them with the police come by, if they're lucky to survive that interaction, they go to jail. And so, yeah, the... The part of it, the part of it was like the target denied the business to the protesters, so they looted. But also, it's kind of like for all those lives, they were tantalized to buy these things, but they can never afford it. Um, so I'll continue on, and back to um, eighteen forty ninety four with Elko Matessa. Ah. Since historical acolytes uh, have driven us to the necessity of violence, let us employ violence. But let us never forget that it is a ca case of hard necessity, and in, in its essence, contrary to our um, 
aspirations. Let us not forget that all history witnessed to this dis distressing fact uh, whenever resistance of oppression has uh, victoriously has it it has always engendered new oppression, and it has, and it warns us that it must ever be so ununited. In, and it warns us that it must be ever so until the bloody tradition of the past be ever forever broken with, and violence be limited to the strictly necessity. Um. This is why we as anarchists, um, and it's been stated uh, previously in this essay, um, we we want we are fine and for the temporary violence of the revolution, which may be insurrectionist, which hopefully it's not, but definitely a, a, a short-term necessary violence of revolution, as opposed to the constant and ongoing and will forever ongoing violence that the bourgeoisie, the capitalist system, and the state imposes on the working class, the proletariat, uh, here domestically with the police and abroad with the military and imperialism. So that's why uh, we as anarchists are for necessary violence and again, and to uh, afterwards, violence be limited to the strictly necessity. Uh, and continue on. Violence begets violence, and authoritarians begets oppression and slavery. The good intention of the individuals can in no way affect this sequence. The frantic, who t the fanatic who tells himself that he will save people by force, in his own manner, is always a sincere man, but a terrible agent of oppression and reaction. R Robin Sp uh, Rob Spire, with his horrible good faith and his consequential pure and cruel, was just as fatal for the revolution as a personal ambition of uh, uh, Bonaparte. Bonaparte. Okay. Napoleon, of course. It's been a while since I actually see that name spelled out, so like my brain's just like, no, that's a word I know. It's like, oh, wait, it's Bonaparte. Okay. I'm... Um, Oh, side note here. Whenever I talked about like French revolutions and guillotines, bootlicker liberals will bring up this name, Rosenberg. I yes, I, I know about him. He just like guillotined everyone he disagreed with. Yes, I know. Um, continuing on, the the ardent seal of uh, Tuxcomate uh, for the salvation of souls did more harm to freedom and and th of thought and to the progress of human mind than the uh, than the specificate uh, specific, um, the specificism of corruption of Louis X and his court. Uh, I guess that like other name is just like another person during the French Revolution that I should like um, look up more to like I know for for really. but uh, could do on because we're almost done with the essay. Um, theories, declarations of principle, or um, Magnuson words can do nothing against the nature of facilitation of facts. Many martyrs have died for freedom. Many battles have been fought and won in the name of the welfare of all mankind, and yet the freedom has turned out to, uh, after all, to mean nothing but the unlimited oppression and exploitation of the poor by the rich. The anarchist idea is no more secured for corruption, from, is no more secure from corruption than the liberal idea has proved to be. Yet the beginnings of corruption may already be observed if we note the contempt for the mass, which for the masses, which is ex exhibited by certain anarchists, their tolerance and their desire to spread terror among them. Anarchists. Let's us save anarchy. Our doctrine is a doctrine of love. We cannot and we ought not to be either avengers, no dispensers of justice. Our task, our ambitions, our ideas is to be deliverers. And yes, I think that was an important uh, point and to make in there is that um, is we should uh, we should not like use our violence for our good intentions. And to bring out justice or our form of it, because sometimes that can get away with us, as in the examples of Rosenberg. And that's the end of that essay. And I've already been streaming for about like an hour. Um, and so there's another Eric Malatesta Tesla essay, also Anarchy and Violence, but from September uh, 1929. They, I've skimmed through it, and it seems like it'd be a different essay.
And it looks like that, too. Yes. I mean, they're just going to skim through it, and it seems like the fact. So, uh, in this, because uh, the first one was written in 1894, and then, and then 30 years later. Uh, and a lot happened in those 30 years. The First World War, the Great War, as it is. So I'm actually, so that's why it really made me want to like uh, read uh, both of these essays kind of back to back because I'm like, wait a minute, there's two essays by Eric Matatusa on anarchy and violence? They are, and they seem to be very different. Okay, so let's read them both. So it's kind of like the remake is not just Anarchy and Violence, but Anarchy and Violence 1924. And so I have updated the reading command. And so for those who want to follow wrong, reading command work. There we go. Anarchy and Violence 1924, the remake. Um, uh, that'll be the next essay to read. It's um, about the similar length or maybe a little shorter, maybe a little longer. Um, but I talked a lot already and I'm out of tea. So I'm going to like uh, took a, take a quick break and we'll practice some self-care. Right? So people can like get up and stretch, get food, um, uh, use the facilities, take a bio break as it were, uh, top off your drinks, go and make a, put on another cup of tea um i'll run a six six an ad break and i know why am i anarchist and yet i'm running ads i'm uh, i'm raising month funds for my friend phoenix and like a couple cents from the ads will like at least go to like a um, payout and that will help so i'll transition over to the be right back screen and i'll be right back 